everybody. Pete, Steve, Corey, Eric, and Charles here in Morocco in Epcot for our dining review of restaurant Marrakesh. Now they have been on me for a while to do this restaurant. I have said that it's not my favorite place. Last time I was here it wasn't all that great. So we're gonna go check it out. We've been walking around all day during the Flower and Garden Festival, and, you know, running around all day. So we're all kind of tired and it's been a long day. So I really hope this goes well. Okay, so uh, Fiasco and I uh, shared the uh, appetizer sample for two. Go ahead, read it off. And that has the beef rewat rolls, the chicken bastilla, and the jasmina salad. Okay, so um, basically what these are are like uh, the beef one is like a beef egg roll covered in powdered sugar and cinnamon. Uh, this really was more of a dessert than it was an appetizer. It was good. I'm gonna say I thought it was good. That was actually my favorite thing of the three, and I've had the chicken bastilla before. That was that's been my go-to when I came here previously, and I liked the rolls more than that, honestly. But I see what you're saying about the dessert. It's, I mean, and I, you know, for me, I had to like basically just kind of hollow out, you know, because there's a chicken one, a beef one, and then the salad. Um, I had to hollow out because I really can't have the sugar and stuff. Right. So. And I found, like, the filling was good. I mean, it was really, it was tasty. Um, the salad that comes with it, on the other hand, made no sense to me at all. It absolutely devoid of flavor. Yeah, it tastes like nothing. I had a little bit of uh, cinnamon sugar from the Bastilla rolls still on my fork, and I tasted that, but the salad is just like a very bland, plain salad. I'm not even sure what the deal with the dressing is. I don't know what it's supposed to be. It's... No flavor. And I'm not a fan of cheese, but like Charles was saying, he tried it too, and that's really the only flavor you're going to get. When powdered sugar and cinnamon is the only hope for your salad, it's a bad salad. Yeah. Um, but I did try uh, some of Eric's uh, appetizer. He had the goat cheese appetizer. Now, now this uh, appetizer for two was how much? This was $18. $18. Um, I tried some of Eric's, tried some of Charles's. For my money, Eric's won. That goat cheese appetizer was perfect. All right, so um, I grabbed the Moroccan merguez sausage. Uh, my pronunciation is probably terrible, and that's a trend that's going to run through the rest of this show. But um, the sausage itself was phenomenal. I think everybody at the table who tried it liked it. Yeah. Um, Oh, obviously, it's not the kind of sausage that you run into at every single place on property or any other place on property, really. So, you know, it's it's something different. It's something unique. It's not some prepackaged random sausage they're going to throw out. I also have to give a shout out to the Moroccan coffee. Um, it has, and I'm going to ask the, uh, the server when he comes back by, but it has a certain floral note that you don't usually run by in coffee that, you know, I, I had the first cup because I was tired. The second cup is the start of like 15 cups of coffee that I'm going to have here. Um, so if you're a coffee fan, definitely get the Moroccan coffee, which um, runs about five bucks uh, per cup, I'm assuming. But the uh, sausage ran me $10. It comes with some onions, a cilantro salad, and all in all is good. The, the tomatoes added make it really, really refreshing. So I, would, I can't imagine not giving this a try. But as far as appetizers on the table are concerned, I'm also going to give a nod to Eric's goat cheese because that was that was genius, and I'm having a hard time figuring out what my favorite was between mine and his. So, so I had the goat cheese with crispy bread, and that is um, fifteen dollars, and it is a mixture of cheese and Kalamata olives, served with tabbouleh, red pepper sauce, and balsamic vinegar reduction. And this was amazing. Uh, the presentation was wonderful. It came out and it looked like the Titanic. And uh, I think the taste was, was even better. It had a really bright flavor from the tabbouleh underneath, which I think really made the dish. And then the creaminess and tartness from the goat cheese, which I really liked. So all in all, I would recommend this. I can't say enough good things about the goat cheese. Okay, so I got the beef 
Brewat rolls. I don't think I'm pronouncing that correctly. I'm almost certain that I'm not. Uh, they're $9. Uh, it's baked layered thin pastry with uh, beef uh, fried and sprinkled cinnamon and powdered sugar. Uh, it was also included in the um, what uh, Corey and Pete got as part of their, I didn't realize as part of the, the, the platter that they got. Uh, yes, it tasted a lot like a dessert. Um, it was, it's basically like two spring rolls, but instead of spring roll filling, it's beef and then uh, powdered sugar on top. It's kind of weird, um, but kind of good. It's like a cannoli meets a spring roll meets a hot pocket meets a bunch of, it's very strange. You kind of have to experience it for yourself. It's not bad. It's not amazing either. Um, the, the sugar on top totally changes the flavor profile to make it really that dessert flavor. I think that without the powdered sugar, it actually might be better. Uh, I know that sounds weird because I like sweet powdered sugar on a lot of things, but I think for this particular dish, it like just doesn't match the rest of the flavor profile, um, but it's all right. So I got the chicken kebabs for my main course, and I've been here multiple times, especially recently, and that's my go-to. That's what I always love to get, and it was, it was perfect today. Uh, out of the past four months, I've been here about 10 times. This is my, one of my favorite restaurants in the showcase, and nine out of 10 times, the chicken's been perfect. There was one time where it, it, it was, it was kind of tough, but right today, it was very soft, very tender, seasoned perfectly. And what I really want to mention is that couscous salad. It's, it's what makes it for me. It's my number one favorite thing on that plate. And there's just like, there's so many different flavors going on in it. Uh, there's these, there's these like fruits, they're raisins. And then uh, I think we discovered that one of them was a date that just adds such, such a sweet, little sweet burst to the flavor of the couscous, which is, which is not sweet, but the fruits really complement it well. Uh, on top of that, in between, there's this little olive salad, which I was never a fan of olives. I would kind of stay away from them. When people put it on my pizza, I'd take it off, I wouldn't even touch it. But since I've been here, I've become a massive fan of olives because I really, really do like that olive salad. And I like how everything meshes together, but my entree was fantastic. Okay, so I ordered uh, the grilled uh, beef tenderloin shish kebab. Uh, mix, had mixed vegetables with it and some yellow rice. This was $30. Um, and I have to be honest, I, I was very impressed with how this beef was prepared. Uh, it was incredibly tender. Um, it was, I mean, when I say tender, I mean, you can cut it with a fork. It was perfectly cooked. Um, with no seasoning at all, it had, a, it had a really nice flavor. Even the rice, also very good. The vegetables were fresh, done al dente. Al dente. Um, I, I was, and I thought for $30, comparatively speaking, we're in Epcot, I thought it was a really good, a really good dinner. Um, I thought the main course was stronger than the appetizers. Um, I, uh, like I said, the goat, you know, Eric's goat cheese appetizer was really good. Um, I'm not that adventurous an eater. So when I hear Moroccan food, it kind of puts me off. Sounds and feels too exotic. I effectively had steak and it was good. It was good steak for $30. So, um, I, I would say I would absolutely have that again. I took a taste of uh, Fiasco's chicken. And that was amazing. That was so, so, so good. Um, so these kebabs are, like, I'll just, I'd come back here just for those. I would come back here just for those. Very, very good, though. Okay, so um, before I get into my entree, I just want to say that so far, you know, this is my first time here, and I can't say that this is my favorite restaurant in Epcot or anything like that, but this has been one of my favorite meals in Epcot so far. With everything I've chosen, um, I have been, like, blown away. Now, back in 
I think it was the end of 2017 Disney Dining Show. We talked about like what we want to do in the coming year. Now it's a little longer than a year away, so I've been really been looking forward to this. And I was worried. I love love Moroccan food. I was worried that maybe they uh, they would not um, they would Disneyfy it a little too much and take out some of the flavor and take out some of the spices. So um, with that in mind, I'll get to my entree, which was. Um, the uh, Magador Grouper tangi- or Tajin, uh, which ran 28 bucks. Um, and it's basically, you know, it's like a clay pot kind of stew deal with um, grouper and like a, a tomato-ish based sauce seasoned. It was absolutely wonderful. Um, the grouper just flaky, fell apart. It was nice and juicy. The peppers that went with it were great. And then there were some weird, surprising uh, stuff that I didn't expect. By the end of it, I was finding olives and um, uh, preserved lemons and stuff in it, and it, every single thing worked together really, really well, and there was a lot of flavor in there. It wasn't dumped down into, like, this one big, like, all-purpose stew kind of thing. There were a lot of uh, a lot of different flavors there. Speaking of flavors, by the way, I already talked about the Moroccan coffee, um, but we talked to our server, and it's rose water is that floral note that we're getting from it. So uh, I will be adding rose water to my coffee at home for at least the next month because of this. But, um, you know, for price per value and just how much I've enjoyed everything, this has been a wonderful experience so far. So let's see how dessert fares. But so far, so good. All righty. So I had the lemon chicken tagine and it is braised half a chicken with garlic green olives and preserved lemon and i've been here a couple times before in the past and i've never ordered this dish i wanted to try something new and um the chicken was good it was very moist tender that was my favorite uh portion of the meal i did not like the potatoes that came with it i thought they were just kind of blase kind of boring um maybe that's a personal preference but they weren't cooked terribly i just i really didn't like them and um i i think what i'm gonna do in the future is stick to my harira soup that's what i always go to it's on the appetizer menu and it's a lentil and beef soup and i absolutely love it i usually order that for dinner so i think i'm gonna probably switch back to that in the future but i i do think that the meat's Overall, we're prepared really well here at Marrakesh. The, the sausage that Charles ordered was amazing. The, the chicken I ordered was really tender and, and juicy. The um, beef and chicken kebabs were excellent. So I, I think they do meats really well here. Uh, I wasn't as impressed with the kind of the produce side of things here. And uh, I'm excited to try the baklava for, de- for dessert, though. So... I got the uh, roasted lamb shank, which is thirty dollars. Um, came with some mich- uh, mixed vegetables: uh, yellow rice, zucchini, capers, uh, and tomatoes. Um, it was good. It, it was. Um, it. I mean, I don't know how to, it was. Very, very tender. Um, there. I mean. I wish it had like some seasoning on the outside of the lamb shank or something though, because it wasn't super flavorful. Um, but it, it was good. Uh, I don't know if I'd get it again at $30, uh, especially knowing that Pete's, uh, uh, steak kebabs were the same price. So, uh, I think, yeah, price per value. I don't think this was really one of the winners on the menu. I ordered the baklava and usually I really love baklava. It's one of my go-to desserts. I'll always order it if it's on the menu. I, I didn't like the flavorings of these there's a chocolate uh peanut butter and a classic honey to me the honey one was by far the best i I thought the chocolate and peanut butter ones were just a little bit lower quality in my opinion so i had some of that baklava too unlike you this is my first time trying baklava i've heard of baklava never had it before but i agree the honey one was the best i didn't actually try the chocolate when i tried to cut it and it's like tough it's hard it's like a hard shell but i tried the honey and i tried the peanut butter the honey was really really good and i'm a big fan of honey too it wasn't too sweet and it was very flaky had a really nice texture and i'm big big on textures uh charles also got this what was it called uh the almond orange 
Blossom Water Tart. The Blossom Water Tart. Almond so orange. the what is it? Almond Orange. Almond Orange Blossom Water Tart. Um, also something that I'm not used to trying, but I tried it. I had this like raspberry drizzle on the side and some fresh fruit. Uh, I thought it was delicious. Again, not something I'm used to, but thought it was great. I didn't really have any dessert. I had I ordered some ice cream and I sh- shared it with Corey. Um, so I, you know, and it was ice cream. There was nothing to say about it. Had a little bite of the baklava. I'm not a baklava fan generally. Um, I did try a piece of uh, Charles's, whatever the hell it was, tort. It was it was good. It was good. Nothing, nothing overwhelming. I do want to say while I've got the camera on me, um, the uh, total of this. Uh, with my Tables in Wonderland discount, so that would include the 18% gratuity, um, $242. I'm going to tell you something. This meal was absolutely worth that. Absolutely worth that. Um, so I thought I would come back here again. Like, I'm, Okay, I'm not raving about it. I thought my entree was very good. Um, I don't know if it's the atmosphere. I don't know what it is. It's just not, it doesn't draw me in here. But the food, no, the, the you know, I'm not drawn to this. I'm not drawn to the aesthetic. I'm not drawn to the, it's very cavernous. It's kind of loud. Um, the seats are not extremely comfortable. Uh, I got to be honest. Um, they're not like padded or anything. They're just like, you're being punished. Um, but... You know, overall, the food was very good. So, I would come back here again. Am I going to run to come back here again? Probably not. But I won't have the same aversion to it that I've had the last several years. So, I think that's about as fair as I can be. All right. So, I am admittedly not a baklava fan. So, um... I'm not going to speak on that, but my or- uh, almond orange blossom water tart. Uh, I don't know what a water tart is. This is the first I'm hearing of the existence of water tarts. Um, and whatever they are, they're amazing. I liked it. Um, it was like uh, it had a raspberry and orange like sauce with it that like I stopped using actually because the, the tart itself, it's kind of like cut out like a piece of pie. The tart itself was good enough on its own. Um, you know what? Sometimes I like a tart so much that I feel I just gotta dance. Does anybody else just just feel like they gotta dance? All right. So overall, Corey, what'd you think? Uh, I love this restaurant. It is my go-to here in the World Showcase, and this meal was absolutely fantastic. I got to try a lot of things that I haven't tried before. The main thing I really want to mention are those beef, like spring roll type things. What were they called? Uh, oh, yeah. well, I don't remember. You guys going to remember that? But they were the cinnamon sugar, like spring rolls with the beef in them. They, they were really, really good. I tried some of your steak. It was really, really good. I have never had either of those before. And they almost, the, the spring roll, beef spring roll, that topped my go-to appetizer, which was the pastilla, and your steak came pretty close to my chicken. And then my chicken is always amazing. The couscous in it, always amazing. Uh, if I had to rate this place, I would give it a solid nine, because I kind of have a hard time finding things wrong about it. I mean, the bread, ser- the bread service that you get, it's free bread, but it's very basic bread and butter. And uh, I think we've all been talking a little bit, and it does get really loud out of nowhere, which is part of the atmosphere, but it can be a little alarming, especially if you're in the middle of a conversation. It's not always ideal. All right, well, I think he's being really generous uh, with a nine. Um, I'm coming in with about a seven. Um, I thought the food, like I said, uh, main course food was very good. Um, I thought the appetizer was good. It was just bizarre. Um, it was more of a dessert than it was an appetizer. It probably would have been better served as a dessert. Um, service was adequate. It, it was, wasn't bad. It wasn't great. It was adequate. Um, part of how I rate some places, what the experience is overall. 
not just in terms of the food, but in terms of everything. How do I feel when I walk out? I feel like I had a good meal. I certainly feel like I got my money's worth. Um, but is it the same experience I have walking out of similar restaurants? No, it's not. So, like I said inside, uh, I, I'm much more comfortable coming back here. Is it going to be my first choice? Am I going to look to make a reservation and see that Marrakesh is available because it's always available? Um, and I'm gonna go, oh look, it's Marrakesh. No, no, that's not gonna happen. But I am much more likely to come back here now than I was before this meeting. Uh, I thought it was okay. I thought it was uh, like maybe a seven and a half for me. Um, I thought my lamb shank was all right. It wasn't my favorite dish. Uh, I've definitely had better things here in the past. Um, I think the thing I like about this restaurant, even though I've never been to Morocco, nor do I really plan to go to Morocco anytime soon, but it does feel I'm authentic. I'm sending you to Morocco. <laughs> it feels authentic I'm in sending there. you to cover Morocco. <laughs> okay. Uh, but no, it does feel authentic, although I, I don't know if that's accurate, but <laughs> for whatever reason, it just like seems like you're stepping into a totally unique place. You are place. one bad sentence away from racist. Um, Why? Not, I'm not, not, not at all. I'm not saying this in a judgmental standpoint at all. I just think it does feel like a very authentic experience in there. Um, and food is pretty good. Hey, Eric? Pete, I have to say, I'm really proud of you for branching out and trying Middle Eastern food. I thought my meal tonight wasn't the best. And I have to say, like I said during the dessert review, the meats were better than like you know, the, the, the produce and fruits and vegetables. Not not the specialty here, but I, I thought um, the chicken, the beef was all, all really well done. I didn't enjoy my experience here tonight as, I, as much as I usually would. So I'd say, even though I do like this restaurant and I do like Moroccan cuisine, I would probably rate this place maybe 6.5 to 7. And really, how far out of my comfort zone did I go? I had beef. I mean... You tried, Which is nice. It's you tried nice. a preserved lemon. Tonight. I did try a preserved lemon. Well, look, I'm not. I'm my not, camera's not. dying. Oh, okay. Go ahead, Charles. Hurry <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's. It's nice to be included. Um, yeah, so I, uh, I would probably give it an eight. I really enjoyed my food. And here's the thing: it's my first time there, so I might have just picked lucky. In fact, I seem to enjoy my stuff more than everybody else. But most people, I think, liked my picks too. They like, so it could just be that. It could just be that I, I picked it. But regardless, this is my only experience with it. I had nothing but good food the entire time I was here. The, the only reason it gets a, a couple marks down is because the um, the acoustics in there, the noise, the the table spacing is all kind of on an average day that might make me really anxious and kind of claustrophobic and the amount of noise and the randomness of it can really set me off while we're having a conversation or everything. And those things are big detractors regardless of how good the food is. When it comes to theming, if you are if you haven't been there and you're expecting some kind of like Aladdin-esque fantasy theming or something like that, it's not. It's so you're not... You could say it's authentic. Yes, as is Steve. Just Steve like has verified thing. for us using the Googles that um, it's totally legit, it's authentic. Um, so it's not there are it's not little alcoves or anything. It's one big eating hall kind of deal with a lot of tile for acoustics. It's gonna get loud. It's going to um, and. That being said, the, the shows are unique, the shows are cool. There's belly dancing, there's a DJ there who randomly does stuff. I'm not sure of what it was about, Thank but you. yeah, but it was cool. Um, it, and so uh, if you go- like He broke, yeah, he broke yeah. into like some Bill Clinton. Thank you. Yeah. If you go and you're in the mood for it, then it can be really enjoyable, but just make sure that you're in the mood for some some like noise and a little party atmosphere. So that those are my only detractors. Food-wise alone though, that's what gets it up to the eight, even with that kind of weird panic. There are there are worse places to eat in World Showcase. I will give it that. There are worse places to eat in World Showcase. Um, and there are better. So it's kind of middling, but I came in here thinking it was like the last place I'd want to go. So I guess it it, it redeemed itself in my eyes. For, and I'm sure they're all breathing a sigh of relief back there because of that. But um, all right, that's going to do it for this episode of the Disney Dining Show. Thanks for being with us, folks. See you again next week. Take care.